Great. So now we're going to talk about what are the symptoms that occur when the cranial nerves are damaged, damaged or lesioned. And they are going to split into these two general categories of positive signs and negative signs. Negative signs being paralysis, deafness, blindness, et cetera, a loss of a function. That's a negative sign. But a release of a positive uh, sign or symptom or, or function is a positive sign. So for example, a positive sign is tinnitus or tinnitus, that ringing in the ears. Um, that is something extra that's added. Paresthesias, dysesthesias, these, um, these feelings that, uh, these sensations, somatosensory sensations that are not um, evoked by stimuli, those are positive signs. There could be positive signs in the motor system. These could be excess movements, for example. But what we're gonna see is that when the peripheral nervous system is damaged, you don't get positive signs on the motor side, you only get them on the so sensory side. Okay, so what we're gonna go through is what are the, what are the uh, um, results of damage to the different nerves? Olfactory nerve, if you lose the olfactory nerve, and one reason that you might uh, is, is because of whiplash, as you can imagine, that cribriform plate, the brain sits on top of it. If the whole brain goes hoo, hoo, really fastly, really, really fastly, really quickly, <laughs> the whole brain goes like that, these, uh, that connection that's going through the cribriform plate, you saw how delicate that is, those can shear off. And so one of the things that people do when they get a, a person into the um, emergency room that's had a, a whiplash type of um, uh, 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 experience uh, is they'll make sure that the person can, they'll test whether the person can smell. So if they cannot smell, this is a negative sign, it's anosmia. And if there is an anosmia, it is often accompanied by a positive sign, which is phantom smells. And these phantom smells tend to be bad phantom smells. So you're, you're smelling rotten food or, or um, it smells like rotten eggs or um, something that, that is not pleasant. So the, these, are, um, these are the result of olfactory lesions. Uh, optic lesion, if you cut the optic nerve, for example, that eye is gonna be blind. You're not gonna see anything. That's a negative sign. You, if in the case of, not, not a cut to the optic nerve, but say, for example, a retinal detachment, one of the things that people will um, experience are these flashes of light. They're called phosphenes. And this is a positive sign. This is as you're, as you're taking away the, the, as you're lesioning the retina, you're getting this positive sign, these, these flashes of light that are not there but are, are um, perceived. In the ocular motor, you get diplopia, which is, means double vision. And there are some other uh, consequences of this. Another consequence is a, uh, is a droopy eyelid. Remember that the levator palpebrae is, is innervated by the ocular motor nerve. And so you'll get um, a, a droopy eyelid, which is called ptosis. Um, and you will also get um, uh, a, a blown, uh, a blown um, pupil because the ocular motor is, is Constrict, is responsible for um, constricting the pupil, and if that's lesion, the pupil gets really, really wide. Um, okay, so that's a blown pupil. Um, but you don't get any positive signs from an ocular motor uh, lesion. Trochlear uh, lesion, you get, again, diplopia. If one of the, if one of the muscles, and we'll, look, we'll see an example of this, if one of the muscles is not working to to correctly align the eyes, then the two eyes are gonna see different things. If this eye is looking here and that eye is looking there, we are seeing two different scenes on our two different retinas and that's getting merged in the brain to show us two different images simultaneously and that we experience as double vision or diplopia. With the trigeminal nerve, the um, the result is an anesthesia. The negative sign is an anesthesia. You've lost the, uh, the, lost the um, ability to sense uh, stimuli. This is, in general, not as bothersome to, 
to, to people, but it is extremely dangerous in, in a couple of places, um, most notably with the eye. So your eye needs to be able to detect uh, foreign um, matter in the eye and to blink in, to protect the, the cornea from, from damage. So an inability to detect uh, uh, foreign bodies in the eye leads to an inability to, to, to person not blinking and not protecting their eye. This is extremely dangerous, can lead to blindness if, um, if, if that's not corrected and, and, and solved. So people that have a, a problem with the trigeminal nerve, we have to worry about uh, protecting the cornea. Um, there is also a positive sign here which is uh, the release of paresthesias or dysesthesias referred to anywhere on, 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 this, on the uh, face. And so one example of this is called trigeminal neuralgia. It's also, trigeminal neuralgia is also known as tic de la rue. It's a sharp, lancinating, shooting pain that goes through uh, the, uh, one of the nerve distributions of the trigeminal uh, nerve. And so for example, one might have a shooting lancinating pain that, that goes along the jaw. And this is a very um, distressing experience. And it leads, it is so overwhelming uh, that it has led uh, individuals, affected individuals who cannot get relief um, to consider or possibly even commit suicide. So this is a really big problem. There are the drugs to treat it. Um, there are drugs to treat it. They don't work in every person, but um, there's, there's progress being made all the time. And this has to be ad aggressively treated because the consequence, the, the human consequence, the, the emotional consequence of, of um, this experience is so uh, devastating. Okay. We go to abducens. We're back in extraocular land. So once again, the effect is a d diplopia, a double vision. Now, when we get to the facial um, nerve, the, there are several problems uh, that, that occur. There's se several negative symptoms, the most obvious of which is that um, you can't move your face. You can't make facial expressions on half of your face. So if the right facial uh, nerve is affected, then the right half of the face is not going to move for any reason. You cannot voluntarily move it. You can't move it um, because you're, you're happy or sad. You can't move it for any reason. In addition, you will stop making tears on that side. You will stop making saliva on that side. The tears is going to be a problem. Um, you uh, will have problems. There are two ways to blink your eyes, to close your eyes, and um, one of those is affected by uh, the the facial nerve, a facial nerve lesion. One is affected by the ocular motor. Uh, so this has consequences in, in protecting the eye. Um, there are, there is the loss of taste from the front two thirds of the tongue. Not a huge deal. There's lots of taste buds elsewhere. So a person is typically not gonna notice that. They might be able to um, report it if you test for it. Okay. Now on the positive sign for the facial nerve is there's uh, a paradisesthesia uh, from the ear. Remember that there's a piece of the ear that uh, comes in, that sends its uh, somatosensory information in from a part of the ear into, uh, in th into the hindbrain through the facial nerve. So I told you that a disease of the, of the, a condition that affects the facial nerve is called Bell's palsy. And it typically follows some kind of a viral infection and the first sign of a Bell's palsy infection is, is typically recognized after the fact. They say, oh, well, before I stopped being able to move my face, I did, I, I had some pain in my ear. So this is oftentimes the harbinger of, the, of a future Bell's palsy presentation. The uh, vestibular cochlear nerve ha causes deafness and disequili disequilibrium. These are the negative signs. The positive sign for, um, for the vestibular cochlear is tinnitus. Um, it might also be uh, 
some ver some um, sensation of either disequilibrium or dis or, or vertigo. I just want to um, introduce uh, that distinction, the distinction between disequilibrium and vertigo. Right now, we'll come back to this several more times. So disequilibrium uh, simply means that you you do not feel in balance. You do not feel in equilibrium even as you're standing or sitting or, or possibly even laying. So it's a problem with what we would call linear acceleration. So you're just standing here. There's nothing going on but gravity, and yet because your, um, your vestibular system is not working correctly, you feel out of balance even though you're not out of balance. The other type of uh, dysfunction from the vestibular cochlear nerve or the vestibular system is uh, is vertigo and that is the, the perception that either you or the surrounding uh, the surrounding area the surrounding environment is rotating so this is a disruption of our perception of angular acceleration whereas disequilibrium is our disruption of our perception of linear acceleration and we'll come back, we'll, we'll go over that several more times. Um, once we get to the glossopharyngeal and the vagus, the two big uh, problems are that, that people are going to notice are difficulty swallowing, which is called dysphagia, difficulty talking, dysarthria. They're also going to have, they might have a problem with gag reflex, but uh, it it's important to remember that about 30% of, of uh, healthy people don't have a gag reflex, so uh, it's not a, not um, particularly diagnostic. They also will have a problem with the cough reflex, which is um, more critical. And with the glossopharyngeal or the vagus, there are also going to be these uh, paresthesias or dysesthesias from the ear, just as, as was true for the facial, because both of these nerves carry a little bit of somatosensory information from the ear. Okay. Finally, with spinal accessory nerves and hypoglossal nerves, what you're going to see are just simply negative signs. So these are negative signs. Um, the, the innervated muscles will not be able to be moved for any reason. Okay. All of that, so what you see again is that positive signs only occur where there is uh, a sensory component. Uh, here is a list of all of these um, uh, issues. And um, here's a list of all these issues. And what we're now going to do is we're going to go and look at where these nerves, these cranial nerves, come out of the brain from.